the all-star app the number one app in the business ufc bellator one championship pfl and more get the app right now link in description all right justin uh december 2nd you returned to fighting the last time we saw you competing was september 2018 why are you deciding to come back um i had a few injuries and then when i recovered from them covid hit so that that kind of delayed everything right i was ready to come back a little bit earlier but covid put a stop to like the world and then i just wanted to make sure i was in shape and ready to go and have a have a good opponent and fight on a good promotion that gives me a chance to get a call up to the ufc i didn't want to fight on a smaller promotion and uh not waste my time but just burn time that i've already burnt a lot of with covid and the injuries i've had so i got the opportunity to fight majed for unified and i took it so going back to 2018 at the end i believe you had a fight then that fight was canceled so that fight was canceled due to an injury and then you missed the whole 2019 the following year uh 2018 i was fine the uh, opponent pulled out i've never pulled out okay. of a fight ever okay right the any oh. anything that's listed on topology or sheer dog of uh injury it was it was the other guy so the the pandemic hit in 2020 so the whole 2019 was a year of just you recovering basically recovering and training yeah how was that time because i'm pretty sure you were looking for fights as well yeah it was just hard no one in canada was having them right so and then uh, Unified opened up. It was one of the first ones to open up, and they were steadily having cards. And I approached Sonny, and a few of the guys I trained with were on the cards and built a rapport through him and uh, told them I'm actually very serious about coming back and wanting to make a last push or run, if you call it, to the to the UFC or a big organization and get signed. And he said, all right, let's do it. And uh, he said, um, UFC is coming to Canada and the new year here very early new year and it's either alberta or vancouver which i live in alberta and vancouver is the next province over so he's like this is it's either now or never so and we were looking for opponent and uh he suggested why don't you just go for the title and see what happens like this go big or go home kind of how was the the pandemic for you well we're still in the pandemic so to say yeah. But 2020, man, when it hit and, and everything was getting shut down, Canada was hit pretty hard compared to, let's say, other countries. And yeah. there was a lot more restrictions. You know, I've, I've been talking with uh, Tanner Bozer throughout the whole time. And uh, I believe he's also from Alberta yeah. as well. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and he was clearly frustrated with everything that was going on. What, what was your situation? It, it was the same as everyone else. Our gyms were shut down. There was, there was stipulations and everything. But a good friend of mine, we turned his garage into like, I'm not even kidding, it's a world-class facility. It has cage panels and uh, mats and wall panels and uh, weights and car elliptical, not elliptical, sorry, like a ski machine, a roar. And we just trained throughout the whole pandemic in there. And we had all the guys of our team show up there. And that's what kept us going and kept us in shape. So like it's, it wasn't like the pandemic. Some other guys who had no place, uh, were, were as unfortunate and had no place to train. Um, I was very fortunate. My buddy turned his and his family turned their garage into our gym, essentially for the two years. What kind of grind was that? You know, what I mean, how many people did you have in there just training with you? Oh man, we had anywhere from four to twelve. Depends on depends on the day, right? Yeah, it was it, it was interesting times. It, was it were you guys running it like a team practice like every day you guys had a certain type of schedule oh yeah yeah it was very 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 scheduled every day six to eight o'clock six p.m to eight p.m and everyone shows up at five forty-five for the warm-up ready at six ready to go it was very scheduled very very well run what kind of development did you have throughout that time because that's a long time to just be focused on training you know what i mean most guys coming up on the regional scene you know they have all this other stuff going on in their lives but in the pandemic you're limited to your movement so you must be incredible like the the time you spent there yeah like like i like i said like there's nothing to do but train and we had a place to do it which we were very fortunate like and i, I had the code to the grad so if like even like pre-practices or if i got off work early or 
anything. We'd go and do conditioning and like go home, shower, come back at six. But he only lives like ten minutes, like maybe a five minute drive, ten minute jog from where I live. So it was just like it was closer than going to the gym. Any uh, you know, altercations with the police? Because I've spoke with fighters from all over the world during that time, and some of them were like, "Yeah, there were people like across the street." with binoculars snitching on us and like all kinds of wild stuff. Yeah, we live in, we live in a, not like a, we both live in a, like an ethnic part of the city where everyone just fucking, not like, sorry about my language, but everyone's just like, okay, these guys are here to train and didn't say a word, right? Like there's not, there's not too many people that would rat us out. We're very, we're very good with our neighbors and our community, me and the guy that had the, had the garage set up, so. No one really, no one really said anything. That's good. That's good, man. That's good to yeah. have that. So, you know, going back to the training in the garage, like, where do you feel like you've elevated? Of course, every fighter is like, oh, I've elevated everywhere. You know what I mean? But do yeah. you have any particular aspect of your game where you feel like, wow, you know, like I really improved that? I think in my confidence, to be honest with you, I could say, oh, I'm like, like you said, like I've elevated everywhere. My grappling is better. My like I've trained nonstop for X amount of years now. And, but honestly, it's a confidence because we had guys from every gym, every, every gym in the city, guys from everywhere pulled through and their gyms were shut down. We welcomed in everyone. And, you know, I did, I was, I was doing really good. And that was like one of the things that everyone would tell me, everyone who I trained was like, oh, dude, you got to get back in there. Right. So we had guys from every gym in the city. It doesn't matter what, like you name in Calgary, we had guys, every gym in the city, we had guys coming in and giving us rounds and coming in for sparring, coming in for wrestling, coming in for jiu-jitsu practice, whatever, whatever, whatever day it was, we had guys from everywhere. Was it like an open secret in the city? Oh yeah. We, yeah, man. Like mine and my buddy's messages would just blow up. Come like, come, come. Cause we'd spar on the weekends. Come Thursday, Friday, like 13, 14 messages from guys. Hey man, can I come to the grad? Hey man. Like, yeah, man. Sure. We're kind of limited on space, but whatever, we'll make it work. Nice. You could have probably put on little little events, huh? Yeah, we were we actually were laughing about it because his mom set up some chairs like on the side. I'm like, we should sell these as front row fifty dollars tickets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could have, you could have, right? And uh, yeah, it must have been insane, man. And and it all leads up to this fight, you know. I mean, United MMA forty seven, the title fight, Majed, yeah. he's the champ. You know, he beat Neil Anderson twice right first for the title and then defended it against you know defended it last may against him yeah. and then the, what's interesting about this fight is both fights he fished him in the fourth round you know yeah. what did you take away from those fights those two fights well i've known majed for years too we've trained together we've competed against each other in grappling tournaments and and he's a great dude don't get me wrong but it's just the sport right uh sometimes you got to go against guys you don't you you like and I and I'm and I like the guy. He's he's nothing but a good guy and only good things to say about him. But going into those fights, I knew he's gritty. I know you can't give him a minute to a minute to like adjust. You you can't you can't give him an inch because he'll take a mile. Like you can't give like that's the best way I say it. You can't give that guy an inch because he'll take a mile and then you're you're trying to catch up to him. And in, in his skill set though, like what do you feel like are his strengths? I think he's tricky with his chokes. Like he has very good, he has very underrated jujitsu, and he sets up his strikes to him. He forces guys to positions where they shoot where they shouldn't be shooting, and forces guys into thinking they're okay. And he just flips the switch and grab, locks onto those guillotines and locks onto chokes, and he's good from there. Was he one of the people in the garage as well? No, he's from Lethbridge, so he's like a couple okay. hours away. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Where did you doing, guys train together? Uh, he his, his gym is CMC in Lethbridge, and over the years I've popped in and out a few times, and he's been in, and we've got some rounds in here and there, and he's just a good dude. With you know, with that history, right? With with prior competitions, you know, is it is it something that can be an advantage for you? you know I mean, so for the you know, with the information that you have about him, or do you feel like? These are totally different fighters. Like what he knows about me is not what. Well, I, I, I think it was just practice. You can't base anything off of that, right? Like, no one's hitting hard. No one's trying to slam anyone hard. No one's trying to go for the kill in practice. Everyone's just trying to get better. 
And they, they have a great gym where they, they, they don't try to hurt guys. And our gym's the same way. We don't try to hurt guys. And that's always why I like to, why when I go down there, I feel safe training there. So, yeah, there's, you can't really base anything off of it, to be honest with you. No one's going 100% in how they are in, like, uh, uh, like how you would in a real, real, real competition. Have you ever had that situation where you went to a gym and, like, the gym, everybody's trying to hurt each other? Yeah, I've been to the States a few times and, and the sparring, not that they're trying to hurt each other, but the sparring is that, like, if you're new in the gym, like, they want to let you know that you're new and, like, you're new there, you know what I mean? It's, but, uh, I don't think that's a good. Yeah, either do I. That's why, yeah, that, either do I. So that's why I like going and training at his, uh, his gym whenever I had the opportunity to, opportunity to. And his, and his, and his coach Lee is just a phenomenal dude too. Always opening and welcoming and lets, gives us schedules when, when, whenever we'd ask. And, you know, I fought on his coach's card as well. Right. Rumble in the cage. That was my last fight, I believe. And yeah, so like just, it's a small community. You don't want to get on bad terms and try to hurt guys and be known as that guy and not, not welcome anywhere to train. Right. When did you guys uh, decide to take everything from the garage back into the gym? When things started opening up. When the restrictions when was that? Opened. I think we've been in the gym for about nine months, ten months now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Was there a part of you like, man, we should just stay in the garage? You know what? We're training there tomorrow. We still go there recreationally. Oh, okay. we, we still there. Like a few guys still go there. We have like a full, uh, sorry, we have a full house furnace in there. So it gets super hot. So when guys are cutting weight, like, some of the guys in previous fight camps uh, come fight fight week. They hit their pads in the garage. They hit hit their little conditioning circuits in the garage and everything because you're in a garage and it's plus 40 in there. You know what I mean? The heat's just blaring and music's blasting. It's just a good time. So, yeah. For sure. Hey, did you guys document the, the garage like throughout that time? Yeah, we have, some, we, have some, we have some good videos and some good pictures, yeah. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, man, that's that's got to be some great memories, man. Those are the moments, right? With the team, oh, yeah, we, and you guys are just grinding. Yeah, we even like we we our 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 team, like our team. We have a group chat. We call it the Garage Gang, and that's like all the original, like, all the original guys that were a part of the team, are in a group chat. We call it the Garage Gang, and it's, it's just a funny joke. But yeah, it's good yeah. times. You guys could probably continue that story right all the garage gang and like where you guys go off into separately and with your careers and where all the, the original guys from the garage are still on the same team in the gym right yeah majority like the majority the original like five six of us mm-hmm. are still the same guys in the gym that are, are on the gold's gym fight team now what do you see in this fight man are you thinking you're gonna enter the the championship rounds with majed or are you thinking like i'm gonna get this done early to be honest i'm ready to compete all five rounds and if something opens up i'll take it but i'm not going to try to force anything because when you force something with him he slithers out and and he's tricky and he'll come and catch you like i said he sets traps and if you force something you give him an inch he'll take that mile and now you're in trouble right so just it's gonna be a cautious fight and if i see an open i'm going for it but i'm not going to force anything and and also you were talking about earlier about the the UFC and and making that run. So there's a lot at stake with this fight, right? Not just the title. Yeah, not just the title. Like my hopes and dreams, and and so are his. Like that's why. Like if if he wins, I don't see why he won't get a call up. To be honest with you, either. Like he's defended the belt twice against two high level guys and on the best promotion in Canada. So I think the winner of this winner of this fight should have a call up like especially if they're in alberta that's our backyard like it doesn't matter where in alberta we should be on that card and they need more canadians in the ufc man why are they limiting so many canadians you're quite your your guess is good as mine man (laughs) and you guys have a crazy fan base as well right yeah yeah it's confusing to me like why they have that approach yeah, I don't get it. Like, if they're fighting in Canada, I think the whole prelims should be Canadians, man, to be honest. Exactly. There's no reason to bring anyone else in. No, it's, it's, you guys got a phenomenal talent up there. Yeah. Um, December 2nd, man, before that even happens, you have to fight main event, United MMA 47, the featherweight mm-hmm. titles on the line. Everybody go into descriptions and download the All-Star app. Justin, thank you so much, man, for the time. And, uh, yeah, it's a big fight. Yeah. Big stakes. That's what you want, right? And uh, it's going to be incredible. Yeah, thanks for having me, John. I really appreciate it.